Young Achieve coming through with To Each His Own. Eight minutes until we hit the top of the hour, 8 a.m. Good morning to you and yours. It is Wake Up on Metro FM. And finally, it is time for Property Explained with Tim Akinusi. Everyone loving him, loving the information that is given every single Wednesday. And today, many South Africans find themselves in a position of being able to afford to purchase a car for one million rand, but not a house for one million rand. Now, this perception has, of course, led to confusion and misunderstanding amongst potential homeowners. Now, in some cases, the conspiracy theories uh, go as far as to suggesting that there could be an element of racial profiling to keep buyers from, you know, accessing assets that appreciate in value while giving them access to assets that depreciate in value. Somebody also tweeted, Mo, because we're talking about this, asking for voice notes, uh, at Press Play SA saying property loan versus car loan, it, it's all about risk interest and time so otherwise ladies and gents we've got tim akinusi in the building morning tim good morning good to be here hi good to yeah, be here with you. you all it, it explains um why everybody keeps uh trolling midrand yeah. with the with the whole verpa <laughs> yeah. you know about your renting analogy because maybe exactly. it's, it's with good reason mm. yeah maybe the banks uh, would rather let them have the verpa than actually have a, a bond <laughs> in their name so uh <laughs> why does this happen and what do we need to understand what right. dynamics are at play yeah, so more it does happen. You know, we have customers who complain to say, look, I've worked out my affordability. Mm. I earn 40K net and mm. uh, this million rand car is going to cost me 17,000 uh, 17, a month mm. um, over a five-year period. And the one million rand, rand house will cost me 9,000. So together that's 26. I have a surplus of 14. Why can't they let me buy both, mm. right? And I think the, the simple answer to that is that there's something called an interest rate buffer that the banks apply to that. So whilst initially you may be able to, to be able to afford it, what banks look at is a sustained affordability test, hmm. right? So that, uh, you know, uh, affordability of the, you know, the, the car and the, the home, together it works out initially, but over time it doesn't quite work out because practically you've got other considerations, petrol, interest rate hikes, which is what the banks then price in, they actually put in another 250 basis points on your existing repayment to see if you can still afford that in 6 to 18 months' time. So they consider the future before they deal with the present. The present, yes. So basically, they place far more weight on your sustained affordability rather than your initial affordability. So what if you don't have a car in your name? 100%. Same, same mm. scenario, 40K, but you don't have a car uh, mm. for whatever the reason, but you now want to get a, a, a bond mm. with the bank. 100% you should always be able to get that bond. Mm. And if they don't, then uh, please come speak to us. Because we, <laughs> <laughs> we will make sure that yeah. that is never the case. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 yeah, But it really does apply to those uh, folks who want to get both. Mm. And, um, and I think that's when that uh, you know, perception exists to say, mm. well, I've just purchased a million rand, but you know, uh, all of a sudden the million rand house, yeah. they're declining me for that. So Tim, yeah. you're saying it comes down to affordability yes, or a yes. cost to income kind of yes. ratio. Yes. So what would that ratio consist of then in terms of your income, yes. your future spending and the cost of the bond and car? 100%. You know, it, the, the, the ratio you should always work on is 20% of your income can be spent on a car. That's a fair amount. Anything more than that, you're overspending on that particular asset, especially given that it's a depreciating one. Mm. On the bond, 30% of your income mm. should be spent on a, on a car. So together, it's a combined it's 50%? A combined, a combined 50%. Okay. So you should never have more than 50% of your income committed to contractual expenses. Right. Mm. You can have more than 50% on variable expenses. So mm. you're eating out, your entertainment, etc. Yeah. Because they know when you have contractual expenses, mm. you can always cut back on those expenses, mm. right? Mm. But contractually, uh, uh, you know, it shouldn't be more than 50%. Do you take into account income. insurance, Absolutely. cell phone payments, all those things? 100%. Okay. You know, uh, you could take into account also the fact that interest rates will be going up. Mm. You could take into account that, you know, um, emergencies would take place. Mm. Mm. So the bank never wants you to be over leveraged, and that's why they cap your contractual um, expenses to be not more than 50% of your income. Hmm. Mm. So, Tim, we've got this tweet here from Apres Play SA, like I mentioned earlier, saying property loan versus car loan. Mm. It's all about risk, interest, and time. What mm. would you say? So, yes, uh, let's look at the risk factor, right? Yeah. Um, if you buy a house over uh, for a million rand, right, your risk factor is fairly 
measured by the banks because they know that your house is going to appreciate in value. Sure. Right? So you can always be in a mm. position to sell it for more. So you always have more value than you have loan from the moment you buy it. But in the case of a car, it costs depreciate in value. Mm. So, right? So they'd apply a lot more risk to that and they'll price up for that. Mm. So which means that the moment you purchase this car for a million rand, it automatically is no longer worth a million rand, but yeah. you're still paying the debt of a million rand. Absolutely. Effectively. Uh, the other yeah. thing, Tim, um, I'm asking for a friend, if, mm. if, if somebody wants to buy a million rand home, how much should they earn a month? Is there like a ballpark you can give me? Ballpark, yes. A million rand home, you should be making at least uh, 20,000 rand net. Okay. 20,000 rand net, yeah. you'll be able to afford a million rand house uh, quite comfortably. Yeah. Okay. And then, Which it's is a, and then a two re- million? <laughs> 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 Just double fight. up on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tim Akunusi joining us right now as we wake up on Metro FM. And I hope this was a satisfactory conversation. If anybody mm-hmm. wants to pick your brain, Tim, beyond this conversation, how can we do this? Please reach out to us on uh, mortgagemarket.co.za or reach out to us on Instagram at mortgage.market. We'll be able to assist you with all of your property needs, get you access to seven banks, and pay you 5000 cash back. Enjoy your trip to America. Yes, man. Thank you very much. Eh? Why aren't you taking us with? Jeez, <laughs> I we would could if I could. Eh? I mean, <laughs> Tim. <laughs> yeah. Property Explained as you wake up on Metro FM. News is coming up next and so much more. Wake up with us on Metro.